the uh, the discussion on the budget continues to, to move forward. And uh, I, I will tell you that uh, more and more of our members are now recognizing, that I think, the severity of the problem and recognizing that the, the cuts we've made over the last two years uh, are somewhat minimal to the cuts that are going to have to be made over the next two years. And so we have been for some time telling our members and telling those who would listen that, that this situation is not just serious, it's extremely serious. And um, the only remedy in the short term is to make the cuts, and the only remedy in, in the long term, of course, is to grow the economy. So those are, are the two areas that we're focused on. But um, I know on behalf of the Lieutenant Governor and the Senate, we're, we're committed to uh, looking under every rock to find every every dollar. And, and that's what we've done. And, um, you know, our goal is in the is in the $1 billion range, and, and, and that's what we're going to ultimately end up with. Uh, the only other major issue that I'm aware of that's going to come up this week is the, uh, the property tax assessment and appeals reform will be in Finance Committee today, and we expect that will pass out. Uh, one of the additions to that legislation uh, since the last time we met is um, a new form of appeal uh, kind of based on what Tennessee has done. We were able to talk to some people in Tennessee, and they have what's known as a hearing officer that really takes the place uh, of the Board of Equalization in, in most cases, up, well, up there in all cases. In our situation, it would be in, in about half the cases. And the hearing officer in Tennessee seems to work extremely well. Uh, what they have put forward are, are uh, licensed appraisers who will determine, uh, in, in, in Tennessee, they determine uh, the value on commercial property, and then they actually have real estate brokers who determine the value on residential property. Uh, the, the change to our bill that you'll see today does not include the real estate brokers, but it does include the, uh, the licensed appraisers uh, to look at the income producing property value at a million dollars or more. And when talking to the people in Tennessee, they, their, their system up there just works so much better than ours. It's, it's more efficient, it's, it's less costly to run, and um, they, they have about 90 to 95 percent of the cases that are heard by the hearing officer are adjudicated at that point and go no further. Uh, if we can realize that same return here in Georgia, we will really cut down on the cost of running the system, but more importantly, you'll have a lot more people that are, that are happy with the result of their appeal. So. Um, that's the one major change you'll see today, but the, the bill we expect will move forward. Uh, again, I'm, I'm working on that with just a few of the colleagues, but, but almost all the effort here in the General Assembly last week and this week by the members that are here are focused solely on the budget. I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, on that or anything else. Um, Senator Rogers, we've heard a lot about um, layoffs at the state level now. I mean, I know some of the agencies have done so, um, but it's to the point Senator Seth Harp said it's going to take up to 5,000 job eliminations. Um, are we looking at more than a billion in cuts and 1.2, 1.5 we've heard? Like, what, are, what is the, the dire situation here about? Well, I'm going to be careful not to sugarcoat it because it's impossible to sugarcoat the situation that we're in. Uh, yeah, there will be massive layoffs. So there, there, will, be, there will be layoffs. Uh, but what form those layoffs are in, I think, is the question that, that we need to answer. Uh, I was just in a meeting, just left a meeting as I came over to here, about 8,000 people in Georgia, 8,000 state employees that are eligible for retirement or early retirement right now. And, and that's one of the areas that we're looking in uh, for, for people. You can call it a layoff. You can call it an encouragement to go ahead and take retirement. But uh, reducing the workforce uh, is, is one of the main focuses uh, because that's not a short-term answer. That's a long-term answer. Uh, Georgia has some, I, I think, 78,000 state employees that are not part of the Regents or part of K-12 education. Uh, and that's the area that we're looking to reduce. I mean, there's, there's no reason to sugarcoat it. That's where we're looking. So would early retirement be kind of the most humane way of doing this? Well, it, it's a, it is a very difficult proposition because, um, you know, with each person you're asking to early retire, you, you're going to have to look and see what position that person has. Is that a position of critical need that must be, mm -hmm. must be refilled? And, and what is the, you know, who's the person that's going to refill it? So it's a very complex process, but, uh, but clearly, uh, if we can encourage people who are going to retire or very near retirement age to go ahead and take retirement, uh, that will help solve the budget problem. Now, to encourage them, would the state um, offer some financial incentive? Or, uh, I mean, you know, so would yeah. there be some upfront cost of that? We don't know yet. Uh, there's, there's two questions. Number one, is it legal? Uh, you know, st the state has a constitutional prohibition against sending checks to people for, for things. So. Um, we have to look at the legality and, and how you would even structure something that would encourage people. And then number two, see if it, it actually makes sense. Uh, remember, we have a retirement system that's kind of 
that was changed a number of years ago. So you have some people in one retirement system, some people in another retirement system, and that, that all uh, complicates the matter as well. So, um, but I can tell you, again, layoffs are part of this. Uh, I think the people of Georgia need to be prepared that, that that's part of the answer, a major part of the answer. Uh, and as part of layoffs, early retirement is something that we'd like to encourage. Did you just say a while ago that would solve the budget problem? That, that would not solve, no. That, that alone will not solve the budget problem. There will be uh, uh, significant cuts uh, beyond just looking at uh, uh, shrinking the size of, of state government as far as personnel is concerned. So what does that mean for education? Because education makes up how much of the budget, um, a majority of it, and Kathy Cobbs on Friday said, you know, how much more can, can you cut? Well, let me be real clear as far as the, the layoffs are concerned. We're not talking, the, the, what we're looking at right now are state employees that do not include teachers and, and Board of Regents. Um, so again, that, that group of about 78,000. So from the layoff standpoint, those are the employees we're looking at, not teachers. Um, the, you know, the, I looked at a department-by-department a department reduction the other day uh, from the Department of Natural Resources, which has had the greatest reduction over the last two years of about 30 percent of their budget. And I believe I counted 31 departments. And I think education was seven or eight on that list as having the least percentage cut. And we would like to continue that uh, to make sure that uh, that, that education is one of the departments that's, that's least cut, but I think it, it would be uh, foolish to say that we're setting anything aside, that that, no, that that any one department is not going to be cut at all. I mean, it's, it's really impossible, particularly when you look at the size of the education budget, to, to say that everybody's off the table. So, again, I, you know, I don't want to be the guy that brings the bad news, but uh, the fact of the matter is you only solve problems when you face reality, and the reality is, is that uh, with the revenue shrinking uh, the way it has over the last two years, 25 percent of the state that there will be considerable changes to the way the state government is run and it will affect every single department uh, in state government. The regions are preparing a report for budget writers that are supposed to come out later today and, and I know that their, their internal plans, the plans that they're going to present include massive layoffs, at least measuring into the thousands. Are you saying that, that if the colleges themselves say to meet their own budget cut that they have to lay off workers at that would not be something that, that y'all would support, or are you going to let them do what they say that they need to do? Well, we'll let, I mean, you know, because the Regents really operates in and of itself uh, pretty much away from us, uh, except from just the funding that we give them, uh, they'll have to make that decision for themselves, and whatever they think is best for, for meeting the, the reduced funding that they have is, is the decision they'll have to make. It, it, that's not going to be our decision. Um, but I assume that they're looking at the same type of remedies that we're looking at, and that is a, a significant workforce reduction. And one of the things as we, you know, as, as we began to see this start happening a year and a half ago, uh, and as we've moved into it, you know, first you look at the, the one-year solutions and the, and the easy solutions, but then once you're into the second or third year of this, you have to recognize that the solutions we need to come up with, it's only responsible that they be multi-year solutions, that these are not solutions that we fill a gap this year and come back next year and find ourselves in the same hole. Uh, they need to be multi-year solutions, uh, reducing the size of the state government as it pertains to workforce is something we absolutely must do. There's always been a lot of talk about the Music Hall of Fame, the Sports Hall of Fame down in Macon, and that they're not self-sustaining, they need state money. Is this a year where they're just going to, you know, not get any state money? I suspect those Halls of Fame that have proven themselves not to be able to um, at, at least self-finance, uh, at least break even, uh, will probably no longer be funded. Now, one of the questions we have to ask ourselves is, because we've really ratcheted down that funding to almost nothing now, is uh, and I just asked this question last week, haven't had an answer yet. Are these buildings owned by the state, and will the state have to continue to maintain the buildings, and what is the cost of that? So we need to not only understand what the cost is of shutting them down, but what is the cost of maintenance going forward. So, um, of course, they're very, those are very minor things, but symbolic nonetheless that, uh, you know, if you're making these extremely difficult decisions to lay off people, uh, you probably also at the same time don't want to fund halls of fame. Mm -hmm. 